I'm okay. Here we go. Here we go somewhere else. Yep, you're good. You're good. Okay. Once you start going, we'll start getting the questions. Mother. Are you afraid of needles? No. No problem with needles. Let's get it. Okay, here we go. hurt? Not very much. I'm gonna start right now. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really feel like much, does it? No, dude. So, Freddie, um, you lived in Fort Wayne your whole life, yeah? Yeah, for the most part. Uh, what, like, where did you see yourself when you were a kid versus where you are now? Oh, my goodness. Um, like when you were a kid, when I was a kid, of, and you're like, "Hey, this is what I think I'm gonna do with my life." When I was a kid, I thought I wanted to be a Secret Service agent. Yeah. Um, that didn't actually end up happening. No. Although I came close, but no, didn't do that. What you What you wind up going for instead? Because I don't know how many people know you haven't done tattooing your whole life. Right. It's almost like a second career, right? It, it definitely, yeah, definitely is a second career. Um, well, I was a police officer mm -hmm. for about 23 years, um, and I suppose I got involved in that because I wanted to be in the Secret Service, Okay. Um, and then that took a life of its own, and I just never made it to the Secret Service. So you just kept doing the cop thing for I did. a long time? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, mostly undercover. Undercover? Yeah, for the what? most part. Like most of your career undercover? I think total on and off it was probably 10 or 12 years total not like in a police uniform not as a yeah. like a regular detective you know um, doing plain clothes stuff I was in the narcotics unit for a few years five or seven years for those that don't know what's, what's <clears> the narcotics part? unit like um, drugs guns prostitution um, investigating that in ways that traditional police officers in a uniform and in a police car couldn't do. Okay. Right. Um, and like, you lived that life for a while. Yeah, I think it was five to seven years and then left that. Um, before that, I, I was on a street crimes unit doing like plain clothes investigative work. So again, not a uniform cop and not like a detective in the traditional sense. We were um, like regular people like, I guess, you know, police officers that if you had to equate it to something, were more like a private investigator, maybe. Okay. You know, just a dude in regular clothes trying to figure some things out. So, did you, like, did you enjoy that life or was it rough? I mean... Oh, I loved it. Loved it? Yeah. Oh, it was great. Even though you can't really talk about what you do. I mean, I can talk about some of it, but, um, no, it was super fun. It, it was really intense and exciting, you know. What was some um, of the most exciting moments you had? Oh boy, I mean, all kinds of foot chases. Um, like jumping over fence, like oh the yeah, movies, oh like yeah, that. I was an idiot. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love to chase people. Yeah. Um, so I often did it without thinking. So you just um, went, it was like a reaction. Just right, like. right. But you, so what you have to keep in mind is that we, you know, I was dressed more or less like you, or like I am yeah. currently, right? Just like, looked like a regular person and I was not very smart. So when somebody would run, I would jump out and chase them mm. dressed like this. And you know, sometimes running down the street dressed like this with a gun in your hand is, is not the best plan for your, the longevity of your life. Is there ever um, any mix up of like, wait, this guy's with us? Only once, only once did it get really like scary where the cops for a moment didn't know the difference between me and a bad guy. Okay. Um, it happened right down the street actually. Really? Yeah. Down here in downtown Fort Wayne? Yeah, right underneath, uh, basically underneath the bridge where the deck is at. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was winter like this, the river was frozen. I was chasing a guy down the river. Yeah. Um, and he ducked up under the bridge, and eventually we found him in the parking lot of Three Rivers Apartments. Okay. But um, when he went under the bridge, uh, I kind of lost sight of him and 
came I came out from under the bridge kind of like wide and not like right up against the like foundation of the bridge mm -hmm. so that he couldn't like jump me right so he couldn't surprise me mm -hmm. um, so I'm in a hoodie I've got my hood up um, you know I've, I've wearing jeans and gun out and I came out from under the bridge and I started hearing police drop the gun police drop the gun so I was looking around for the bad guy mm -hmm. not realizing that the cops standing on top of the bridge saw a guy in a hoodie <laughs> with a gun you know <laughs> had no idea who the guy was right. and yeah, it got intense for, for a moment, but fortunately one of my buddies uh, that knew me very, very well immediately recognized, like when I looked up at them, he was yeah. like, oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. But, so, doing that for a long time, mm -hmm. um, how did you wind up getting into the tattoo game? Was that because of undercover work? Was that... It was. It yep. was? Yep. I um, had probably never considered ever in my life getting a tattoo. Ever? Like, never. Never Wasn't thought, even a that's thought. That's cool? Nope. Nothing? Wasn't even a thought. Really? And um, I was out one day with an informant, um, uh, you know, about to do a buy. I, I don't remember what we were going to buy now. Yeah. Um, but he was having trouble, like, buying the fact that I was a police officer just because I didn't look like one. Yeah. I just, I looked pretty rough at the time. I think there's pictures of me looking like that in this little shadow box up here. Yeah. Um, but back then, yeah, I looked like a child. Yeah. Um, so he, uh, it was just a discussion all day about whether or not I was really a police officer or I was just like pretending to be one or something. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. eventually I had a coat on and took my coat off. And um, when I took the coat off, he saw my arms were bare and he was like oh dude you are the police and I'm like I don't understand what you mean and he informed me that I had no tattoos and that you know most bad guys had tattoos so um, he uh, he wanted me to try to fit in better so really? it occurred to me that maybe that would be great for being undercover you know mm -hmm. would be to be a tattooer and be in a tattoo shop where you know, all kinds of people come in and talk about all kinds of crazy stuff. But uh, then I loved it and didn't want to jeopardize either my ability to do it or the people that I was tattooing with because of the job I was doing. Yeah. Um, you know, like retaliation type stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't want somebody to come. Find out who you were. Right. And then, you know, do throw something through the windows of the shop or, you know, whatever yeah. I, I was afraid might happen. So I separated the two lives and kept them totally separate for a very long time. And then you finally got to get into this full time when you retired or? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was full time before I retired. I was yeah. probably tattooing 30, 30 hours a week um, and working at the police department, you know, 40 to 50 hours a week. Oh, wow. um, and then, you know, I, what I do for the tattoo shop isn't just here in the tattoo shop, right? What do you mean? Well, there's a lot that goes on, like making your drawing. Yeah. I, I do that at home. Okay. So there's hours outside of this and outside of the police department where I was at home um, also working. So it's like drawing? And... Yeah. So, you know, I was probably total putting in 80 hours or more a week between the two jobs. Yeah. Um, and eventually I just had to decide what I wanted to do with my time, you know. It, I was getting stretched very thin. Yeah. Um, and then I was working a job at the police department that was pretty stressful and tough. And um, it just got to the point where I, I couldn't do both anymore. And I had to decide which, which I wanted to continue doing. So then what made you decide to go the tattoo route? The job I was doing at the police department was so stressful. I was just, I couldn't. Couldn't do it. Yeah, it was too much. Over it. Yeah, and literally then, like wound up in the chief's office like crying really? to the guy like I cannot do this anymore. Really? Um, it was just such a such a demanding position to be in, um, like fixing problems. Mm -hmm. um, like everybody needs you to fix it. You can only do so much. Right, right, right. Yeah. I felt a lot of pressure, and maybe I put a lot of pressure on myself because I wanted to fix things and make everyone happy, mm -hmm. not you know. Not just one group of people, like not just the prosecutor's office or not just the police department. I wanted everyone to be happy and 
put an awful lot of pressure on myself to, to make that happen. And um, with this, I suppose if I had just been doing that, it wouldn't have been so bad, you know. But I knew when I got off work there, I would have to go home and draw for two hours or three hours every night, and then come in here first thing to do tattoo. And it was just, it was a lot. Mm. So I chose this. When you said before, uh, being able to express like your creative side mm -hmm. isn't somewhat of release, right? Yeah, oh yeah, for so sure. Being able to do this helps you with that uh, creative bone, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I drew and painted um, a lot as a child and throughout high school. And then after high school, um, I just kind of let it go. Mm -hmm. I, I just didn't do anything with it. Maybe once in a while I would do a painting or something for my mom or, you know, whatever. But um, not very often did I get to, to do anything with art. And once I started doing this, it was like, oh, wow. I do art every day. And so it was, it was nice. Yeah. I gotta pause for a second. Sure. The top hurts like a mother. <laughs> <laughs> the closer we get to your shoulder cap, the more it's gonna hurt. <laughs> So you, can, you can keep it rolling, we'll clap in a minute, but <laughs> holy cow, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I didn't warn you that it will change as we move yeah. around. Well, down there I'm like, yeah, it's some needles, you know. What? <laughs> well, be thankful we're not going up another three inches to like that bone. When people would come into your shop, come into your tattoo shop here at Gypsy Vault, like, what's, what's something you want them to feel? Because it doesn't look like a normal tattoo shop that I've been to, you know? Yeah, I, I want them to feel comfortable, right? I want them to feel like they're here and they are the most important thing here, okay. if, if that at all makes sense. Um, you know, like, like that they're in their own living room, yeah. right? Um, I, so, I worked in other shops that are more traditional tattoo shops, like street, yeah street level shops where you can walk in and get just any old tattoo like at a moment's wall, notice yeah or yeah or, or pick or... off the internet or wherever yeah. you come up with something um and that's that has its place right I, I just after working in those styles of shops for some some number of years i, I went to a shop very much like this one mm. up in chicago um and just walked away thinking man that is what i want to do yeah. Um, I want something like that and so like circumstances came together a different a few different things happened that caused me to want to open my tattoo shop my own tattoo shop mm -hmm. and uh, that that tattoo shop that I had been tattooed at was kind of the vision for this um, so that when you walk in the door you know there aren't a bunch of people hanging out you know gawking at you intimidate it can be intimidating right traditional yeah. Traditional tattoo shops can be very intimidating um, because there are a lot of people typically in them and um, you know usually I would say you have heavier music playing. I, I tend to lean towards jazz and you know blues and walked in this morning softer was playing yeah and, softer well. music um, just to make people feel comfortable. Yeah. Getting tattooed isn't necessarily the most pleasant experience. Um, it, you know, the pain can sometimes be a lot. I mean, there's a little bit of a sting, like I'm not going to lie. Yeah, on a smaller tattoo like this, it's probably not too bad. But if you were getting your whole arm done and we were going to be here for seven hours, yeah. after a while, it takes a toll on you. And, and I just, I don't know, I always felt like when I was getting tattooed and Nine Inch Nails was playing, it was very difficult to concentrate on, n not concentrate on the pain, you know. Sure because that kind of amped up music just sort of is distracting. So, so. would you call it, I mean, a popular word right now is boutique. So you have, you have like clothing boutiques, would you call yourself like a boutique tattoo parlor? Or? Sure. Yeah. I guess. Just something that's chill and inviting. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, I don't know. I just want people to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, to walk away thinking, thinking of it as more of an experience maybe than just simply having gotten a tattoo. Gotcha. You know, like where they're like, oh, this nice music was playing and the people were nice and nobody was, you know, <laughs> looking over my shoulder the whole time I was getting tattooed. That tends to happen yeah. in other shops. You know, you'll have three or four people walk up and be like, oh, what are you getting there? And 
you know, peek at, at your tattoo and yeah. that can be uncomfortable for some people. So that's fair. Yeah, I tried to make it so if you more had, comfortable. If, if somebody is wanting to get, I mean, I'm getting my first tattoo right now, mm -hmm. but if you had to give advice to somebody that wanted to get their first tattoo, like uh, having the shop the way that you have it, all the experience that you have in giving and receiving tattoos, is there advice you'd give them? Or? I, I mean, yeah, so I think first and foremost, you, you have to know who you're getting tattooed by, right? Yeah. If you want a quality tattoo. And that can be found in a number of ways, but I think that the best way to know is to see actual tattoos that someone has done on another person. Not just a drawing on a wall. Not just a drawing on a wall or, I mean, unless you're going for that style of tattoo, you know, there's still a place for that style of tattoo in, in our tattooing culture, right? Mm -hmm. The, the walk-in, like flash tattoos, that's still a big deal in a certain segment. But I think the people that come here aren't looking for that. They're, they're looking for something personal and, and um, tailored to them. Mm -hmm. um, so if that's what you're looking for, you need, if you just look at an online portfolio, that can sometimes be deceptive. Jeff is actually, um, yeah, mm -hmm. he was actually my witness to be like, so, ready. See, this is what I, this is what I mean, right? When, what we were just talking about. Yeah. You, you could have heard my name and looked up my website or looked up my Instagram and been like, oh yeah, this stuff looks cool. But do you trust that, right? You went to Jeff and you were like, who is this guy? Yeah. Is he cool? Like, first of all, are his tattoos good? Oh look, your whole arm is done by him. Yeah. That looks nice. And then is he, is he a dick? Is he, you know, like whatever. Yeah, and you did that. You did exactly what I just described. Yeah. And that's, that's how my whole business works. That's why I stay busy, because of that. We kind of touched on this before, I want to transition back to that you lived in Fort Wayne your whole life. Yes. Right. Uh, you like the city, I'm assuming. I do. You're still here. I do. Why do you like being here? Um, I mean, it's familiar, first of all. It's where I grew up, you know? Um, but I think that I've looked at living other places, right? Like, I love New York City. I really do. It's like totally my vibe. It's very social and I, every time I go, I meet people and I just, I, I find it to be so amazing and fulfilling. But also, I think if I lived in New York City, I would just be paying rent, yeah. you know? I'd be yeah. working every day to pay rent. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't be able to do the things that I do on a regular basis, like, like travel around the world. Um, I, I go to really nice restaurants. Um, I enjoy a lot of like concerts and musicals and plays and things like that that I think if I lived in New York City and I were just paying rent all the time I wouldn't have a chance to go do a lot of the things that I do you know um, so I don't know Fort Wayne it's small there's a lot going on here maybe more than people realize mm -hmm. um, so, so when I am know, home, know about the, was it the dinner theater in West Central? Oh, the Arena yeah. Dinner Theater. Yeah. yeah, that's a cool little place. Yeah. Um, yeah, most people don't know that's there. I lived in West Central for like a year before I even knew that was there. <laughs> so it was one block from my house, and I didn't know it existed. So, um, yeah, I think if you get out and, and explore, Fort Wayne's got a lot to offer. But I think what it really offers is the ability to do other stuff. Yeah. with your life outside of Fort Wayne and then come back here to have like a home base, yeah. if you will, you know? I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you weren't tattooing, uh, I know you said you wanted to be a, in the Secret Service, mm -hmm. what do you think you'd be doing now? Like if you just weren't mm -hmm. doing tattoos anymore, you already lived the cop career, like what would be something fun for you to do? <laughs> I mean, thinking about running for mayor, yeah. so that I guess. That, that may be what I'm doing in four years instead of tattooing, who knows? Is that a thing just because you like, um, not necessarily the politics of it, but you like... Oh, I hate the politics of it. Um, I like the community. I, I want to see the community... I, do better is not the right word because I think we're doing great, right? Like, like infrastructure-wise, I, I, I do see room for improvement like on a human level, right? On a human interaction level. Um, and so there are some things that I would like to see change and I guess maybe the reason this all came about is because after being a cop for 20 some years and 
having like an effect maybe on the community, mm -hmm. leaving that and not doing it, I, I don't miss being a cop, but I do miss having some sort of positive influence on the community. Yeah. And so, I, you know, tattooing is a luxury, right? Yeah. Um, for people to get tattooed, it's not necessary. It is something that, that if you're able to afford it, you can do it. Um, and I, I'm not really changing lives. I mean, tattoos are meaningful for people. I have um, women that come in after like breast reconstruction surgeries and, and I will re-tattoo uh, or tattoo on their, their um, finish their reconstruction by tattooing nipples on. And really? that's a really crazy process to watch happen, um, especially when they look in the mirror afterwards. Yeah. So that's me having an effect on people, but not not the same as when I was a cop. And so I just really want to be involved um, in some of the things I would like to see changed. I think the only place to, only way to change them is from the mayor's office. Mm. I, I don't think I could, you know, from, from the city council, if I were to run for that, I don't think I could have the same effect. Gotcha. So I'm gonna give it a go and see what happens. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it may work out, it may not. But I'll at least have tried, right? And I think if more of us at least tried, maybe the world would be a slightly better place. So dude, Freddie, thank you so much for the tattoo. Oh, you're it's welcome. Dope. I love it. Oh, thanks. Um, if you have one thing to say, like what do you love about Fort Wayne? Why do you, what do you want to see happen in, or continue to happen in Fort Wayne? I want to see us keep growing. Yeah. And I want to see us keep coming together and enjoying the city. Yeah. You know, it's one group of people. Where can people find you? Yeah. Um, gypsyvault.com at Freddie Rad Instagram or the Gypsy Vault on Facebook. Awesome. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for your time, man. Yeah, thank you very much. It. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe. <laughs> um, like and subscribe. Oh, you please to... like and subscribe. Yeah. Like, yeah. subscribe, follow the <laughs> podcast because the podcast has a lot more stories. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Man.